drive the flight. Excuse me. Change cameras. Well, <laughs> uh, we got launched and um, took off with the birds, and they kind of had a mind of their own and decided to uh, circle around a bit. And uh, every time I seemed to get them on course, they'd head left. And uh, we had a bit of a different heading that we normally have this morning, and they, they're used to heading into the sun. And uh, this morning we were heading across. So... Uh, that might have confused them a bit, but pretty much the whole flight, they would get on the wing for a while and then break away again. And we ended up quite a ways east and actually got south of here. That's why we came from in that direction instead of that direction. So. <laughs> but uh, once we got by here, they uh, then turned south and headed right to the pen. So it was pretty straightforward after that. That's about it. <laughs> They're out in the pen on the refuge in a closed area. They're uh, inaccessible because uh, we don't need people around, and that would be the worst thing that could happen now after all of our work. So they won't be available to be seen uh, around here, unfortunately, until we get two or three more generations coming down, and then that, then they'll be you'll see birds here and there. But we really hope that everybody stays away from them and gives them enough space to become wild. This morning, Richard had a difficult time because we divided the flock. You know, we're taking half of the flock to Ch Chassahowitzka and half here. So we had two separate pens, and this is the first time they've kind of flown with just 17, and I think it was like a missing man formation for them or something. And they just <laughs> kept turning back. They didn't like it that much. But I want to introduce the entire team. This is uh, uh, Chris Gullickson on the end here. Chris is one of our pilots, of course. <laughs> this is Dale Richter. Dale is on our board of directors, and, and uh, he volunteered to help us. He's driving, and he was flying in the top cover airplane. And this is our top cover pilot here. This is Don Lounsbury. Don and his wife, Paula, have volunteered on every single migration we've ever had, right from back from 1993 all the way through. And, and, uh, and we finally wore them out. So, so Paula decided to go back down to her place in Florida with Don, and, and then Don, Don couldn't stay away, so he came back. <laughs> and then we also have Jack Ryder, who's a, a pilot who's been with us for a long time, too. And Jack had to go back because um, his house is down to zero when his cats are freezing. And, and so his plants are all dying, so he had to head home. And this is Heather Ray. Heather Ray is, is our... Uh, our, our uh, uh, that's good. Outreach and, and development. And uh, Heather, you, you may remember, has been with us for a long, long time. And then she left and did something else for a while. And then finally we talked to her to coming back. So, And this is Liz Condy. Liz is the... Well, Liz does. Well, you know what Liz does. She does the website, which is primarily important, but she does all of our... Um, she's our chief operating officer, so that, that encompasses everything for Operation Migration. That's the backbone. So. And then we have Beverly Paul, and Beverly is our supervisor of field operations, and she's the one that's in charge of all the training of the birds and, and, and coordinating the team on the ground and, and uh, all that stuff. So that's a really responsible job. And next to her is Brooke Pennypacker. Brooke is one of our pilots, of course, that, that, that flies, and he was up with us this morning, but um, Bev and Brooke are going to be monitoring birds here this, uh, this, over this winter. Uh, Bev and Brooke spend more time with the birds than anybody else. You see, they, they uh, go to Patuxent in the spring, and they help with the early training, and then when the birds are moved to Nacita, they come there. We do all the training all summer. They're here for the duration of the migration. Then they monitor the birds over the winter, and in about two or three months, we'll start again with eggs. So it's a long process. <laughs> Gerald Murphy is a volunteer on this project for Five years now? Five years? I can't believe it. I've known Gerald five years. We phoned up Gerald. Gerald phoned up one time and volunteered, you know, and you say, lots of people want to volunteer, but they have no idea what the commitment is. You know, it's a big time. It's a lot of effort. And so we thought, oh, yeah, sure, okay, that'd be great. And towards the end of the season, we started to run short of people, and we, we phoned up Gerald and said, well, you're still interested? And he came along, and, and I think you were gone, what, three months that year? It was. <laughs> His wife still hasn't forgiven us. And then, of course, the name is Richard Van Hoeven. Richard Van Hoeven was your lead pilot this morning. So, no, we, we can go. It's, this is uh, 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 Chris is from Wisconsin and Georgia and Ontario and Ontario and oh, Ontario, 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 Ontario. 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 Richard, that's Ontario and uh, Illinois and Florida and uh, Florida. Wow. So you have the United Nations of. <laughs> There's the United Nations of, of whipping crane teams up here. It's been so long, I really don't know where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he comes from an RV. 
<laughs> the RV that uh, that Richard is in is is called the Flare. So all the boys that live in the in the Flare are called the Flairvoyants. <laughs> <laughs> We don't stay warm. Everybody says, how do you stay warm? You don't. You just get cold. Last year, Chris had some serious frostbite in his nose. We froze fingertips. Uh, you have heat packs. You have lots of clothes. I still have mine on. I don't know why you guys took your flight suits off. It's cold. But we don't, you don't stay cold. You just, you just put up with it. But, you know, as you say, you can, it's only two hours, and you can hang by your thumb for two hours. So that's, that's no big deal. Um, we want to thank the refuge and all the people who volunteered and worked hard to build the pen out here and give us give these whooping cranes such a warm welcome. You can't see the pen, and I hope you never get to see it, only for the for the for the safety of the birds. But they did a marvelous job. It is just it is like whooping crane Hilton out there. It's beautiful, and they've got an incredible blind and a water system with buried pipes, and so the birds have fresh water and food and. A electric fence around it and the whole area is closed and, and everybody's been so cooperative we just can't we just can't tell you how pleased we are to be here we're really excited about it I think uh, James Barnett is here somewhere the, there he is James you should come up here you should come up here and say a few words because I this is the, the the refuge well I guess he's the project manager but I'll let him talk a little bit and then after that we'll have a few questions anybody's got questions we've got the the leading crane experts up here on this table so thank you james my words will be brief because you have experts here that you want to hear from and not me but but we're grateful for operation migration all the people have been a partnership in this and, and i'm particularly uh, gratified and appreciate the work that uh, our staff has done here and the volunteers we've had tremendous support from the community done a great job as joe said we're very proud of the facility that we built and we look forward to continuing this project over the years and how important it is. So, thank you. Grateful for your thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The whooping cranes are grateful too. <laughs> and Terry Peacock is right there. I'd like to get Terry up too. Come on up, Terry, because she worked hard on this project. Great <laughs> lady. Yeah, exactly. With a name like Peacock, just get up here and strut a little bit. <laughs> um, you've all seen my face a lot in the last year and I just want to say thanks for everybody in this community who did all the work and all the volunteers and um, for those of you that are here at the flyover event I was out at the pen site and that was absolutely the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life so I really appreciate the opportunity to see this and appreciate we set bringing them in so back to the experts <laughs> And the other people we'd like to support are all the supporters, all our, our sponsors that aren't here. We'd like to thank um, Disney, for instance, Disney Wildlife, uh, um, no, Disney Worldwide Conservation Fund. They provided all the wings for our airplanes and that white van that we drove in. They're a big supporter. It's also the Disney uh, uh, Animal Kingdom people who'll be doing the health checks down here and, and looking after these birds. So we wanted to thank them too. So a round of applause for Disney and all the rest of the supporters. Please. So, uh, as I said, we have all the people up here, all the experts, so if you have any questions, just fire away and we'll do our best to answer. Do you think this flock will come back here next year, or do you think they'll get with a wild group and go somewhere else, or get with an adult group? Why did Beverly answer that? <laughs> Why don't we get everybody to answer some of the questions? That's a good question, and we don't know for sure. They probably will come back here. Um, usually two or three years later they might start pairing up with somebody and go to a different territory but the first first year they should be back well that's our plan too um, what could actually cause a problem for us next year is them coming back to the pen and begging for food so <laughs> it's gonna be a mixed blessing but they probably will be back here next winter um, it's the males that will set up, set up the wintering territory so any male that we have brought down here will end up bringing his mate down here then if he likes this as his territory so the girls will probably end up going somewhere else oh. <laughs>